Healing crystals, skincare routines, knitting a sweater, fitting in jeans. With Katie and Sarah, no need to worry, you're on a lady journey. We're about a Drake song. Uh, Started from the bottom. No, I'm at the top. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know Drake. I don't know either, but I just know he likes to DM teenage oh, girls. Oh, that's right. Who doesn't? It seems like every <laughs> man that has any. You know, it's so funny. It's just like checking in. <laughs> yes. Hi. Hope you got home safe. It's like what we're talking about. Just the social structure. You know, you don't hear about a woman mm. messaging. As I feel like if a woman gets that far in her career, she's like, I just want to go farther. Yeah. Not. I need to get successful so I can well, that's not true. I don't want to unfairly stereotype women as not. Well, there's teachers. <laughs> there's teachers. That's true. I and don't know what they're doing. There's plenty of, if women were in power more, we could be psycho more. And that's what true feminism is. It is. It's saying let women. Let us get there. Let us. That's why I applaud Elizabeth Holmes. Yes. I love, th- I love. She was a risk taker. She yeah. was a risk taker. She's the e- our Elon Musk. Yes, she is. <laughs> 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 we are, and I will go to space with her. <laughs> Honestly, if she had another company, I would invest in it. I would too, because the sheer ballsness, balls, is that a word? Ballsness? Yeah. Ballsness. Ballsness. I wish I had that type of business. St- oh, business. Ballsness. Ballsness. That type of strategy in my own life of just yeah. like, oh, I'm just going to lie. You and know? she talked at a deeper register because uh, apparently um, men don't register above a certain decibel level. It's shrill. Ugh. How did she know that? You know, I was talking to another female comic once, and now I'm talking this way. She told me she has a deeper voice, and she was telling me met she has like f- or is happy with that voice because um, it does well for comedy. Yeah, because people men, listen to it. Yeah, people listen to it. So now when I'm on stage, I'm just I come up there and I'm just like, hi, <laughs> hello. <laughs> I have a I have a um I have a voice my mom has a really a lot of vocal variation when she talks and so I kind of have that too where I and I always notice this about myself I notice it in college like you know I'll be like hi you know sing-songy voice and even though my natural tone is like here a little bit lower but I will just like raise it up and be like oh my god you know yeah and I also will change my voice depending on where I'm at like if I'm in a situation where I don't really feel safe or I feel like I have less power if I'm not like if I had to go get gas at a gas station late at night or something I would be like hi yeah but if I'm in a different s- situation where like I feel like I am at a restaurant and I'm ordering and I don't want to seem like rude I'll be like hi hi sorry whenever you have time yeah just making myself small order. yeah just making myself <laughs> small um I yes I am a white woman but I won't I I will not be using any slurs and no one needs to point their phone at me and I'm not calling the cops nope never gonna do it <laughs> never gonna do it um, no, I because I've noticed this some the way I will go high pitch yeah. to start a sentence, especially if we're if there's a group dynamic, uh, it'll be like ah, 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 it'll go yeah. there, and I feel like it's my way of being like I'm coming in with a point, and hey, I've everybody. been ignored in the past, and this yes. is my only way to get through the conversation. Oh God, it is such it's so uncomfortable when you're in a group dynamic and you try to say something and it just gets talked over, and you're like I guess I'm a piece of trash. <laughs> I'm not going to try it again. I will not try it again. I did oh, it. it happened awful. to me the other, the other day when I was at the um, table at the Comedy Cellar where I work on a still frequent basis. Pretty frequently. Um, and I made a joke and nobody laughed. And then somebody made the same joke and everybody laughed. Well, if it makes you feel better, I did that to run on recently. Oh, that's fun. That's good. Turning the tables. And he said I, I like stole the bit. But I just wanted to be like... I didn't hear you. I said the bit. We were thinking the same thing, and I realized you probably just said it. Yeah. But I did give him credit, but it was really awkward. Oh. I had felt like I was a witch. <laughs> <laughs> See, guys, w- like when a woman does it, when it happens to a woman, you're like, okay. Yeah. I, think I like made eye contact with another woman across the table, She's like, like knowingly. You. And then when a guy does it, it's like hold the presses yeah someone has been wronged in the community <laughs> there is a girl like my guy friend who's a comic t- was telling me a story about this girl in a writing girl comic in a writing room she had thrown out an idea that everybody 
liked in the group setting. And then this guy was like, you stole that right out of my mouth. Like, meaning, like, I was just going to say that as if she's now a witch that's stealing <laughs> ideas. And we just thought it was really. Yeah, it couldn't have been my brain. Yeah, it had to be spells. I love I love a person in the workplace who um, cannot celebrate you in any way. And they just are full of passive aggressive rage. Yes. Actually, I was going to say that. <laughs> I okay, sh- yeah. Charlie. Were you? <laughs> well, you're too slow. Yeah. Yeah. I did a show Friday, n- Saturday night at the New York Comedy Club, and there was a girl. Another club like where we both frequent. frequently work. Yes, we do. And uh, there was a girl from the audience who was like, I was just saying that. And I was like, oh, you were just saying that. <laughs> it was just like a, a funny thing to blurt out. Like, yeah. why are we... Why are we dialoguing right now? Yeah, but me. Yeah. <laughs> me. <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting. I I feel that impulse sometimes in myself to make things about me. Oh, yes. I will not deny that part. Of, I do have yeah. that ego. And I think I'd like to say most of us do because I'm just assuming yeah. we're all kind of similar. But yes, and I fight it. You, got, you have to press it down, <laughs> I, shove it down. I do. And I leave conversations being hoping that's not what I did yeah I because I saw Allison Levy's show last night and I wanted to, I was talking to her about the abortion show and I we were just going back and forth but there were other group there and then I felt like I was being like I know stuff about abortion too that's what uh, I yeah. was <laughs> feeling about and then I just left there being like I sh- just sh- less is more yeah I know it's such a it is such an impulse in me I uh one of the books I was reading I'm not sure if I had um mentioned it to you it was called the untethered soul and this was one I was reading back when I was in Miami, but it's all about just like feeling mindfulness, mindfulness of impulses and just kind of falling behind it and letting it follow through with you instead of identifying with it and going after it. And yeah. after I read that, I, f- I did. I mean, it's completely gone away now, but it's been <laughs> it's been a while, but now I'm back to being toxic. But um, I, it did <laughs> help me like realize like I was in a group conversation where and this has happened a couple times where, you know, when you're in a group conversation and one person, maybe it's usually somebody that you don't know that well, uh, or oftentimes I feel like it's a, a female person yeah. who is trying to get attention in a way that's like really like off-putting and, uh, and like demanding. Mm. And you just want to turn to the person next to you and be like, have I lost my mind? Like, is this person just acting normal? And uh, because everybody's just acting like they're like, oh, okay, like how special. That's so amazing for you, you know? And she's just like, yeah, well, uh, then I traveled to Istanbul. (laughs) And you're like, it's the ego coming up being like, everyone's attention should be on me. Yeah. An artist (laughs) who I have put myself out there for years. And it's like, I almost felt like I, in the past, I haven't been able to stand it to the point that I feel like I need to message my friend to be like, is this girl crazy or is it just? me and then I realized like oh yeah everybody thinks that that person is being out of control they're just not saying it out of politeness yeah and And you don't have to say it because because of that yeah you don't need to say it you don't need to be like I need a reality check (laughs) that I'm the best person in this group I know where you're like is it me or is this person amped up this conversation to weirdness yeah like why are we working hard all of a sudden in this dynamic but I totally I feel like this goes on line of like where my journey is going with like the toxic yes yes that is where i've been yes i know thriving lately going in the toxic spiral so bad yeah well because well here's incidents is like i'm hanging out with a friend they're writing their snl packet we've all done it and most of the time you send it through a portal Mm -hmm. that you're like i might as well just throw it into the nearest body of water yeah Who's yeah. reading it? Yeah. No feedback. You work two weeks on it. N- you don't know what's going on. I've done this for years. I've had it where I've gotten close. And then because I've had a connection and then I have thought you could do it to the portal. And then over the years, you realize everybody's who's getting it is connected and has friends or like has been seen. Yeah. And ha- didn't have to write a packet. And message for the listeners. Just so you know, if you want to submit an SNL packet. You can. You can. Because we is will give you the portal. Submission. <laughs> it's actually open submission, which seems insane. And then you realize it is. It is. Because <laughs> when are they like, we found an amazing sketch writer. It's a 53-year-old woman that yeah. lives in Ohio. 
genius. <laughs> yeah, they're Betty. not. They're getting the comedic scar- stars or who they think are the comedic stars of tomorrow. Yes, and it's oftentimes people that either again already have a connection to the show or you know it's there is. If if it was truly, I think like egalitarian, which the open pur- portal, the open portal purports itself to be, then we would see like the fifty three year old woman, like just genius, hop, genius sketch writer, hopping on board. Yeah. yeah, where you're like, what a mix of people here yeah. at SNL. So he's saying this, and right away, I can feel it flying out of my mouth, even though I know it's so negative, and I go, oh, that's so. Nobody reads those. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh, my God, if I was doing that, this is the thing that I complain about with people. That's why I say you should never share your creative ideas because you will run into someone like me. Yes. And I realized how awful that was. And also, I'm just been bitter lately that um, I made an amends. Oh, that's great. I did. And they felt good about it Uh, because I was it took a week of talking about it. And then at first I didn't realize until like after talking to Joe. And then um, the thing is, I'm just like so depressed that I've so I've decided to go back and really go back into my 12 step program. That's great. And work a spiritual program. And I don't know if it's working, but I'll tell you the things that feel good to me. It's nice to go to a room where you hear other people that are going through the same feelings that you're going through. Oh, so the na- opposite of Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh, it's a struggle. Oh, it actually is a struggle. It's not like I was on vacation. Yes. And then you also see the people that you see thriving also have their issues that they're dealing with so it puts you in a perspective that i think is healthy to yes. have yes um Wouldn't it be funny if you just mentioned everybody that we both know <laughs> who's in your <laughs> aa oh my god right she's not doing good either weird it, exactly and then the other thing i like about it i've, I've heard so much like wisdom from there i also say take what you need yes absolutely you go to some of the some twelve step programs. They can get really religious, and I'm not super. I've been to a few. I went to one in Texas where the guy was like, "I used to be gay, and now I found this church and this Ooh. program, and they're He's now in a I, different. <laughs> I'm in a different program. <laughs> I w- I go once a week to this church program, and I meet with other men that are like me, and I'm like, oh. You can be gay and sober in New York. Like, yeah. you can be your full self. You can be with other men that are like you. So there are programs that can get toxic. Oh, my gosh. That is so and disturbing. And you will know it. Yes. It's so disturbing when, when you, a lot of times you're seeking support and then you get the support, but then it's in, like, some kind of weird, deformed manner. And, oh, it's just disturbing. Well, it's like any religion. It just sucks off. Yeah, I think or a group thinking. And so it I guess if it works for this group, but it was just kind of like, oh, no, the sky is going against the grain of who he is as a human being thinking that is part of how to get sober. Yeah. And it's probably doing more damage. I like that he's sharing it, too, with zero self-awareness. Like, <laughs> and I'm, I'm finally getting my gay problem taken care of. You guys know how it is. You're like, run, <laughs> run. <laughs> this is awful. So. But the other reasons why I like going in, I think a lot of people should work some kind of spiritual program, whatever that means to you. Yeah. Because here's some things that I like about it. What helps me set is like there are people sometimes you in your mindset you think have wronged you. Yeah. But you do your own personal inventory and what you can control in the situation and how you play a part. So it makes you get feel responsible for some of the negativity in your life that makes love you it. feel like you can put a little bit you're like here's what I can do here's I what I that. don't have to do so there's a lot of wisdom like there's one girl's story I remember this one always um, has stuck with me she was at a bar with people that she knew from drink the drink hole and then she invited them to have like a little let's have a get together on my roof and uh, and they drank more, and somebody fell off the roof oh. and seriously hurt. And she, it's not like she did anything to purposely, but she's like, because of my actions or like my lifestyle is, I put myself in this situation, and I feel I am responsible for this person. And I feel like having that, it makes you realize 
things in your life, maybe if you're not getting or bad things that are happening yes. to you, it puts you in a mindset of like objective. Yeah. That you I realize. This. Yeah. So what's the process of going through the inventory? Can you take me through it? Cause I feel like this could help solve everything for me. Well, a lot of Is times this the secret. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just be self-aware. Well, it's been a while. I think the eight step is from what I gather is like you write a list of all the people that have wronged you and then there's columns that you write amongst it I have to go look at my old notebook because it's been a while since I've ran steps okay to do the actual step work um there's columns of like what was the incident what could you have done in this situation or okay. like what's your part in this because there are times where like I remember being really upset with the guy that I dated for six years being like uh, who, how he, I felt like he treated me poorly, mm -hmm. not abusive, but maybe borderline with neglect and just like ignoring needs, mm -hmm. emotional needs. And building a fort. And building a <laughs> fort. <laughs> um, that is abusive, I think, building a I fort. I do too, like, especially when you're like, where are we? And then I have to climb into a blanket fort and hey. talk to him. Hi, how are you? Ben Folds is playing. <laughs> 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 I'm just like, hey, it's like Napoleon Dynamite, like I know. universe. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Where, you know, I harbored so much anger towards them, but I also realized my codependency. Yeah. I did. I could have left. Yes. And it wasn't like he was holding me there. Yeah. And I and also I'm all like, why wouldn't he marry me? I was barfing pretty much once a week from alcohol poisoning. Yeah. yeah. That you're like, why would I think that is marriage I'm material? Fun. Yeah. <laughs> So, so it's like, it's like, uh, I feel like I'm going to do kind of my own little bootleg version of this tonight. It's like w the person who you're harboring anger towards, then what happened, what your own role was in it and what you could have done differently. That's, yeah. I feel like that's a good place to be in. Cause I have had like friendships that drop off where I'm like, I wonder if that was me. Was that them? I feel like they jilted me, you know, yeah. and it just, and it just festers in there. And then you have like jealousy and feelings of rejection that maybe you're coming from, you know, inside the own house. Oh yeah. And then, yeah. Cause then you harbor resentments that usually what they say is like ends up leading to like reaching for that drink mm. or whatever thing or whatever. that feeds that food yeah uh even like exercise <laughs> i wish that was my yeah, meditation yeah, meditation anything. anything um but so that's i've gone back into that and it does feel and i try to make an effort a lot of times i would just go and not share mm, and yeah. they say that sharing is service the other thing too is like just being of service for others so rather being like self-centered in your but mm. what about me what about me instead of like well what can you do for this person so you're outside of your ego that's nice yeah, yeah service is such like a path to um kind of check out of your own misery I want to get into doing that more like even something like I used to do a thing where once like once a week I would just like or it wasn't once a week oh my gosh I'm acting like I'm a saint here it was every day <laughs> it was uh, serving food you know it was like serving food to like people who were in a different situation that's bad you know where they can't get it themselves and and um it's uh it's such a valuable experience just to humble yourself and then just to be like I am actually helping out here and I'm not just taking up space and doing you know living yeah. a selfish a purely selfish life yeah well yeah just it helps you get out like sometimes I'll have like jealousy towards people that I like but I find that if I go hang out with them or like just be friends yeah then it dissipates yeah and I I'm like back to s yeah, I'm not seeing them from a connection. distance yeah, yeah there's a connection and then there I'm being connected to them because sometimes I do it because it's from afar yeah and you get you it does seem like when you're alone you get a distortion of reality especially when you're like Absolutely. looking on the screens or whatever and then you see people and then you know it's like you see a friend you're like you've seen them on Instagram or whatever, like living the best life, whatever you see them. And you're like, how are you doing? They're like spiraling. I'm spiraling. Yeah. Or I've had people say that to me. It looks like you're doing amazing on Instagram. I'm like, oh, are you talking? I'm, this is Katie Hannigan. I'm not sure if you remember me. <laughs> um, I'm up, I'm down, I'm all around. Yeah. I, yeah. A lot of times people are like, Oh, it looks like everything's great. And you're like, I can't pay rent. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's great. It's, uh, the program, the whole program seems like 
it seems awesome to get the support support of a community and I feel like you know I just drink you know occasionally so it, do, it wouldn't really make sense for me to go but I like it just as I like hearing about you going just as like the emotional support system of like hearing getting confirmation that other people are struggling and life is a series of challenges easy. yeah and we're all like floating through it yeah horrifically yeah yeah and it gives like such a different perspective and a reality check of like what we were talking about in the last episode of like I'm just listening to Steve Harvey <laughs> That's my self help. I I will get to the top of this mountain. You know, we're like these other like motivational podcasts. I'm binging. I've been binging um, the School of Greatness, <laughs> oh God, which please. I love. It's so funny because uh, uh, Lewis Howe, you know, who it's like, what does he even do? He doesn't do anything. He's yeah, not yeah. even. He's not even like a compelling character. He just has a podcast. You yeah, know? and and he has. He'll have people on, and and it's like the School of Greatness and like overcoming obstacles. And like, I'm not where I want to be in my career. And, and here I am. I'm like going, I'm go heading to the top. And then he'll have like someone who's like a Broadway superstar who was discovered at age eight. <laughs> <laughs> and just like thrown into the Lion King. Yeah. And you're like, what? <laughs> what? How, what am I supposed to take away from this? Like, yeah. be a child prodigy? Yeah, be discovered. Yeah, good luck. But I mean, yeah. but it's even people who are in that. I think it's easy to get into the mindset of like, oh, I'm the only person that has struggles because I'm not where I want to be in my career. But people who have success early still also have struggles and yeah. everybody has them. Oh, we've, I mean, we, I think we've seen it in our community of people that you're like, wow, that was a shock that they died of a drug overdose or a oh suicide. Gosh, and yeah. you're like, they were like the most successful person I knew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it just goes to show like you don't, everybody is, they say that and it's such a cliche quote. And I used to really like, it just really made me cringe, but it's like, everyone is fighting a battle yeah. <laughs> that you have no idea. It's like, well, yeah, but you could still say, please. How exactly. about you could still say thank you. Yeah. You don't need to be like out person. of the way, bitch, you exactly. know, Exactly. but um, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Well, I heard another somebody had articulated wh why 12 step programs like AA work really well is because part of like addiction is the inability to live in the moment and which is true. Every time I would have a drink, I was there. Yeah. At least for a little while until it stopped working. Yeah. After like the eighth <laughs> beer, <laughs> you're I'm crying because yeah. somebody slighted me in the. <laughs> but for the first two, you're yeah. like, why was I worried about like not being married at 30? Like everything yeah. is fine and you're hanging out with other alcoholics and you're talking to them. So it's the inability to live in the now. Your most of your anxieties from past mm. or what how your future is going to be but with like the 12 step program it allows you to like work on the now mm. which oh, is really great. hard and it's really valuable and it's something that you don't just like learn you know it's like why wouldn't that be the only thing they teach you in school yeah like that and reading it's like they should. I, I didn't learn i didn't use algebra yeah i know because life tools are way more um better like helpful than actual algebra Yes. Yeah. It's like, or how about how know, to maneuver through life with egos and mental illness? How to spot a narcissist? <laughs> yeah. It's now. It's just like now. You know, I'm in my 30s, and I'm just like, I'm just learning. I'm just learning piecemeal from yeah. a podcast. Like this resonates. Like you know, I just. I, I know it's really weird. There's a lady that was on again on TikTok, and she yes. has ADHD. My temple. My yeah, spiritual it's temple. My spiritual temple. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. But she was like. This she's like I cannot express how insane this app is. She's like, I've been with horrific ADHD. I've gone to all kinds of therapists and specialists, and it wasn't until I got to TikTok that I learned how to cope with it instead of trying to fix it. Wow. Where she was like, being like, when once you keep your shoes on as long as possible because it keeps you in the mindset of doing something. Don't you know take a break on the couch when you get if you got stuff to do like figuring out how to work with your dopamine stuff wow yeah. that's crazy like because hacks have such a bad re reputation now like when it first came out it was like oh 10 hacks and is this like you're just like bending a paper clip and like making it into an earring like that's yeah. not a hack but it's like actually 
these this sharing of information is like super useful which yeah like, like all the validates me being on tiktok for an hour last night yes i know it does make you feel because i actually do feel like that is one of the main reasons why i am on tiktok the whole time is learning trying to get tools that were never mm. taught to me I, I feel like i'm just searching for the answer and i never find it i'm like maybe it's the next one <laughs> But then I get sidetracked with some juicy family drama that somebody is has no problem sharing while they put on <laughs> makeup. <laughs> but I that, love yeah. It. So that's where I'm at. I am twelve stepping. If you guys ever if anybody's suffering from spiritually or mentally, I it's love something that. to maybe look into. It's so awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing your Thank journey. You. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing something that's like similar, but it, I feel like this would go like my journey is a bit more into the decor world. And kind of revisiting our home sense. Yes. And as you know, we did a podcast in Midtown a few weeks ago with our dear sweet friend Natalie Cuomo, who badly needed help. And we did. We helped her. So check out her podcast, yes. which is actually called Help. And it's yes. about re- receiving, being open to receiving. She reminded me um, of a young me. Yes. <laughs> like I say The horrific mistakes. You're I like, know. What? I'm like, do not date a man with a tattoo on his arm. You know, like <laughs> that's, he's trouble. You're getting extorted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like time traveling. And, <laughs> and then it's like, you want to stop, but you know, there's nothing you can do. No, there's nothing. <laughs> but so we, we, I was chatting with you after the podcast and, um, we went to Muji. And uh, Muji is Muji. like a, 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 it's my safe a relaxation space. shopping experience. Oh my God. You go in so much Muji. hope. Well, first of all, you said Muji, and I was like, how did you know that uh, Muji is everything to me? <laughs> how did you know it's the only place? Because you in New York City, it is it is an onslaught of overstimulation constantly. Horns honking, a siren, a man running with a knife. Yeah. And you go into Muji, and you step into another world. The atmosphere is spa. It's quiet. It's clean. There's a little um, steam coming out of a... They have these as an oil portal. Th- the essential oils, they're um, they're they're evaporating into the air. I mean, it's and they have all of the different scents. They, they talk to you quietly. It is so quiet. Yeah, there is a sound of like traditional Japanese music just playing so softly, and they have and it's so many. The textures are all very earth tone yes nothing hurts the eye i mean when i go into muji and i'm like i i never want to leave here it feels yeah. so good i would rather go in there than pay a hundred dollars to go to a spa yeah because it's the exact same experience and it's immediate yeah i i'm surprised more people don't go in there just to meditate to just to get out of the city i'm like oh yeah. my gosh and of course i love everything in muji too and it sounds like they've sponsored the podcast i wish they would yeah. um, i wish r- really anyone would at this point um <laughs> By the way, please like and subscribe on our. Um, oh, I YouTube forgot to do our stone. I forgot to do our stone dedication today too. I'll do it at the end. Yeah, uh, like and Stay subscribe tuned. on our um, YouTube and iTunes. Anyway, so Muji is so it's gorgeous and the vibe is very much me, where it's like basic, minimalist, functional, beautiful. And I got to thinking and I was doing some research about just like, you know, not in the sense of like home decor of like I'm doing a whole thing because we all know that's been like the challenge of a lifetime for me. But instead of like kind of doing a whole like bedroom set, whatever, being more intentional about curating my experience in my own space. So that day I was inspired. I got an essential oil. I got a gorgeous rose blend. I did get a diffuser, not from Muji because they were like $80. And I was like, yeah. let's be honest. I'm going to get it at Target. Okay. <laughs> like, let's, let's just, so I got, I have, so it's the three, the three main things of sight, sound, and scent. Okay. Like, now when I have my workspace and I'm, I'm right there on, on the street. So I hear a lot of horns. I hear a lot of like screaming people. It's, it's been a lot for me. And I do feel like I'm just constantly like people will lay on their horns. It drives me insane. So like in my desk area and I just kind of did my desk area. Like I have, I have gotten a bulletin board there. I have some beautiful plants. I have those, the light from the window. So it's like sound yeah. check curated the sound. Now I have my diffuser. I have the rose and the eucalyptus mixed together. Scent. Boom. Yeah. I'm there typing. And then I've also, now I'm going on YouTube and I am putting on the like Zen study 
music and it just covers the sound of the horns. I, I would prefer it to be like silence, you yeah. know, but it's like this is the, you know, the lesser of two evils, one of which is like a man throwing up is what I heard the other day. It's just like <laughs> a guy throwing up on the street. And I'm just like, I, should I should I yell down to him? Like, do I check on him? Like, he seems fine. But, yeah, but you're in his living room. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm in his point. living room trying to work <laughs> and in his bathroom. really. Yeah. Um, so so, yeah, I've been like really on this kick of like just intentionally curating the space and I did hear um somebody talking about this on a podcast and he was uh, a guy who he had been in like an ashram and and they were talking about like the most important thing is like what you see when you wake up like Mm -hmm. what sounds do you wake up to what 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 do you see when you wake up like is it your phone screen immediately it's like of course it is like I'm living in the modern era what am I, I know. what is it 1949 it's like how I get my dopamine in the yeah. morning is I have to check to see yeah. if I need to overreact to anything <laughs> um so I <laughs> so I've started with the workspace and I have been doing it and it's really been fun and I I have kind of had like a little bit of writer's block lately where I just haven't wanted to work or like try I'm like trying to work on the couch which it's like that's never a good sign yeah I'm like oh now I'm sleeping what happened no so it's been good for that but I want to bring it into more areas of my life I want to be just like more intentional because it's like that feeling that you have when you go from the chaos of New York into Muji like why can I not have that in my regular life? Yeah. Like, why can I not have, um, you know, I, I like did, went through the whole process of like decorating my living room. And it's like, why can't I just decorate my life in that way where I have like, uh, you know, have the Alexa. And when I come in, it's like Alexa play like rainforest music yeah. and just set up the whole environment Yeah, that it's like now I'm feel amazing and I feel thriving. And I feel like if I could just get myself to do that, you know, more in my life and just be more intentional about it, that I would enjoy it more. And I would, I wouldn't have to spend so much time like exhausted, decompressing, stressed, you know, from stress every week. I would just be like, oh, now I'm Zen. Well, it's hard because as we're talking about this, we were saying earlier, I'd like to cook, but it's hot. It's so hot. Yeah. How are you supposed to get Zen when you walk into hot soup? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's so hard. The only time is like when the weather gets cooler, then I can be like, all right, I've just accepted right now it's chaos. It's hot. It is so hot right now. And it's it is veggies and hummus <laughs> for me. I'm like I was going to make a salad this yeah. week. I'm like, I'm good. But I know what you mean. One time Joe left and he decided to put I think it was a jazz musician, something Davis, Bill Davis or something. Oh. And he put it on lightly. And I came up, and there was yes. one lamp light on, and there was light jazz playing right when I entered <gasps> the apartment. And I was like this. This is the nicest thing I've ever heard. Hotels sometimes do it. They'll leave a music yes. station playing. Yeah. Yeah, with some light music when you enter the room. And um, it was so delightful that I was like, this is what I want every time That's I walk I in. Want. It is so awesome. And, uh, yeah, I think, like, just, like, making a checklist of, like, it, and it's just I think it's as simple as like setting it up like putting the remote by yeah. the door so you go in you just press it all on yeah. or you know like Alexa turn it on turn on the air conditioning immediately instead of like going on the couch and just sitting and staring at the wall yeah and you know I just want to bring that into my life you know to elevate it and to and to do it as a way of self-care doesn't need to be like it's Saturday time to, you know, we're talking about like with yeah, Rosebud, yeah. like just it now it now I'm stressed out from that. Yeah. So self-care in a way that I guess is more like all the time. Yes. And mindful. Like I do agree with you. Like I think about that with like my bedroom and drives me crazy when when we had them shoot in her, they put everything back, but they put it, the photos and the artwork within like inches off. Mm. Like they didn't put it in the um I guess the feng shui of yeah. how I liked it yeah and so it's always been kind of like when I walk in I'm like uh I yeah. hate that those the artwork that we have my the gallery wall or whatever is on the back wall is off and it yeah. dry it makes me not want to be in the room I'm like that with the sheets that I'm like they're they look yellow to me now like yeah I need to get new sheets and then I was thinking about like adding window treatments to make it cozier and I want better lighting yes because that stuff I call it headache lighting when it's not the overhead but you 
the lighting that you would use if you had a headache for some reason I just love it that low light L- I Lamp love light. low light yeah, yeah I cannot I cannot abide a fluorescent in my home and Mike will get the fluorescent bulbs because Mike <laughs> I know he's like I can see better I'm yeah. like I I it's garish yes and we all is, look green in yeah. our skin tone right now it is not good yeah um but yeah it's like those I, it just feels like and I had that I rearranged my living room recently and now actually it is so much better yeah it's so much better and doesn't bother me at like a subconscious level it's like you want your home to be like this oasis of just like good feeling it's like the one place that you have control over yeah and then when you fix it then almost you kind of it's like you don't even appreciate it and you're like now I don't even notice yeah but but I do feel like this weekend I didn't do like it wasn't an extensive like gut clean in the apartment but I definitely like did the dishes Anything that was out that should be in the closet, I put away. I put the pillows nicely. I oh. wiped down some of the surfaces. Love it. And when you walk in, you can can tell, even it though feels other people so won't good. Tell, yeah, it but feels it, so good. It does. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. I I get that too. Where like if if my environment is messy, I have to clean it before I yeah continue on with my work because it's like now I can't work. One was like I, I have pants that look like. I was attacked over there. Yeah. It's just too much. So like random little socks on the floor where I'm like, can't you just put this in the bin? Yeah. That's me though. In in our apartment, (laughs) I'm the one that like does that. And Mike's like, what? It looks like you've been kidnapped. Especially sometimes you're like, but you were so close. Yeah. You're like (laughs) one foot away from there. (laughs) Oh my gosh. It's fun to know that like, because I do think that girls get that as the stereotype. Yeah. But I think that actually is pretty even. It is. I know it a is, lot yeah. of messy. Women. I I am I am I am messy, but I'm clean. Like I I will tolerate messiness like on the way out. Yeah. You know, and then like it, it will get to a point that it bothers me so much that I have to clean it. Yeah. You know. But sometimes when Mike Mike is gone, I just like to like celebrate myself by like being a slob for like yeah. a couple of days, and then after that, I'm like, this is too much. Yeah. It's gone too far. <laughs> I have to hide everything. Yeah. Or yeah. like packages, like have a package out, you know, yeah. but then, but then it does like, it does make me feel like in the moment it's like exciting to do it, but it builds up to where I'm like, my life is chaos. <laughs> this is why nothing's working out. Yeah. 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 Can I make, I also have like a really weird observation. Oh like, yes. I don't know if I'm correct on this, but this is what I think in my mind. Doesn't it seem like extremely attractive hot girls have the messiest living situations oh interesting it does feel it always like seems like they're close it's like the beautiful disaster yeah. like type where it's like I, I can't stay long I got invited to go on a boat yeah yeah I'm running out <laughs> yeah you're like okay I'm I, going to a music festival in Europe it's like yeah, there yeah, are <laughs> yes it's something about that like I remember when I was younger th- thinking that that was it, that is something like that manic pixie dream girl yes. type which is like so funny to to like basically be subconsciously embodying it because it is something that was like of the male gaze you know and it fucked us up yeah it did it's it like did. I, I, I do drugs you know yeah like, i'm not in control of my life i need <laughs> you to save me and they're like i'm not interested you're like okay I, but i was told that you'd find this hot i, I saw this in the movie fight club <laughs> Remember when Drew Barrymore drew eyes on the wall and like the guy wanted to help her? Yeah, Most guys yeah. are like, uh, fuck that. Yeah, they're like, bye. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but I do remember like when I was younger being really messy and chaotic like that and thinking that I was like I guess like asserting myself in a way yeah. somehow. Uh, yeah. Um, but then it's like, you know, now something's ruined because I have all my clothes on the floor <laughs> and I spilled. I'm like, well, that's why you don't do that, I guess. You have to learn I the know. hard way. No, but that's my journey, though. It's just like it creating an environment of Zen, mostly for my writing, but I want to expand it to everything. Yes. Lighting a candle makes Lighting a difference. A, yeah. And it doesn't even need to be like, uh, again, like it doesn't need to be furniture. I've moved on from trying to like have the perfect furniture in my life. Now I'm more about like, you know, I want to get something like uh, a gorgeous like painting or something that I can l- see right when I wake yeah. up, you know, something like that or like maybe instead of like having my phone right there I put it somewhere else and I have like a a different alarm clock that plays like a notes something like that 
Um, but before we go, I wanted to do the um, stone dedication. I forgot to do this earlier. This is for Jane. And, and is it Jade for Jane? Jade for Jane. So, Jane, we so appreciate you um, being part of our Patreon. Thank you so yeah. much. And thank you to everyone who's been on the Patreon. We really, really appreciate you guys. And we are actively using the money to try to grow the podcast. So yeah. your, your money means everything to us. And um, this is a piece I got when I was 17. I visited New York for the first time and it was so exciting and thrilling and I stayed with my aunt and we went to Chinatown. I was like, so I've talked about Chinatown in, in New York before. And I just think it's like one of the coolest places the in, in the entire city. They have so many like authentic, uh, you know, it's like talk about like shopping mom and pop. Like yeah. all these stores like are the just grocery like stores. the grocery stores are incredible. The bakeries, I love them. But uh, one of my favorite things to do when I first moved here was to go to Chinatown and go in these like little souvenir shops. And in the back, you would just find like this trunk of like antique yeah. jade. And I mean, this was like two dollars, you know, it's like it's the original Pier one import. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's the authentic. You know, it's like who knows this who knows where this came from? Who knows who made it? Yeah. It has a moving piece in the middle which I have been told that this is a symbol of luck. So it actually was carved and then the ca the piece was carved it was probably all carved from one piece. So isn't that cool? Oh. It's weird. two it's two um dragons on each side there. And it's just this. That's a nice thing to fiddle with. Yeah, I love it. And so I've had this forever, and it's just one of my. This is one of my ultimate favorite pieces of jade. Now jade is like, th this is probably jadeite, which is like a less. Um, it's like a more plentiful um, stone, f I think, from what I understand. Um, but jade and jadeite are super powerful. If you have a piece of jade and you put it under your pillow you will be guided in your dreams. So it yeah. help bring the subconscious up to the front. I'm going to sleep with this under my pillow tonight. This is my lady journey. I love it. Yeah. Not this one, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the princess in the pea. <laughs> like, it was so thick. I couldn't sleep. Like, I love when you did this as the necklace. Hi. The Hi. Anyone notice anything different about me? <laughs> Coming in hot. <laughs> Book me. Okay. Well, lady journey. Lady journey.